Good morning, I'm Sarah Chitrakar and these are the headlines of the hour. Nominations for the upcoming National Assembly election to be registered today. Majority of the parties finalised their candidates. The government fails to intensify monitoring at border points amid rise in cases of new sub-variant of coronavirus in more than 40 countries including India. A low turnout in controversial poll guaranteed to give a fourth straight term to Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Official result expected tomorrow morning. And Liverpool beat Arsenal to reach the fourth round of FA Cup. PSG thrash Revel 9-0 in the French Cup. Nominations for the 19 seats of the National Assembly are to be registered today. Majority of the parties have already finalised their candidates for the upcoming election. The ruling alliance partner, Nepali Congress, has been allocated 10 seats based on power share and had finalised candidates late last night. It has fielded former General Secretary Krishna Prasad Sitola from Koshi Province and coordinator of the party's disciplinary committee, Ananda Prasad Dhungana from Madesh Pradesh. Likewise, the party has decided to file nominations of Jeet Jung Bosnet and Bishnu Kumari Pudasaini from Bagmati Province and Padam Bahadur Pariyar and Kiran Babu Shrestha from Gandaki Province. The party has selected Bishnu Kumari Sapkota from Lumbini, Krishna Bahadur Rokaya from Karnali and Narendra Tabhatta and Baldev Bohora from Sudurpashim provinces. The party has selected seven candidates for the upcoming National Assembly election from the establishment faction of Nepali Congress. However, party's General Secretary Gagan Thapa has expressed a dissatisfaction with the decision. CPN Unified Socialist that has two seats to its name has yet to finalize the candidates amid intra-party disputes. Meanwhile, CPN Mao Center and Janata Samajwadi Party has finalized their candidates. The main opposition, CPN UML, has decided to file nominations for all 19 seats of the National Assembly. The government has failed to intensify monitoring at the border points amid rise in cases of new sub-variant of coronavirus JN.1 in more than 40 countries including neighbouring India. 756 cases of the new sub-variant have been reported in India within the past 24 hours that has a total of 4,050 active coronavirus cases. The sub-variant has been detected in Nepal as well, while the number of active coronavirus cases has been increasing. According to the Ministry for Health and Population, there are three active coronavirus cases in the country as of latest update. Nine individuals that had entered Nepal through the Trinagar Gaurifanta transit in Kailali had been tested positive. However, they were sent home without taking any preventive measures. Locals in the border areas say that COVID tests are not conducted on all individuals who enter through border points which can further increase the number of cases. Furthermore, COVID tests are not done on people from other nations at the border points. The Tribun University has called for fresh applications for the post of Vice-Chancellor. The call has been made after cancelling the previous one made by Recommendation Committee amid controversy surrounding its criteria. Those interested can apply for the post within 15 days along with required documents mentioned in the notice. The committee had issued a notice on Friday last week calling for applications for the post. However, issuing a new notice yesterday, the authority annulled the notice that was issued earlier. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal, who is also the Chancellor of the Trivon University, had pledged of keeping the appointment process for the post of Vice-Chancellor of the University free from political interference. A committee had been formed under the coordination of Minister for Education, Science and Technology, Ashok Rai, to make the recommendations for the post of Vice-Chancellor at the TU. Former Vice-Chancellor Dharmakanta Baskota had retired on 2nd of November last year. The post had remained vacant since then. Time now for our segment, Public Pulse, where he texts us with the opinion. Public Pulse.
Here's the question, what should be done to save youths from drug addiction? The options are A, control drug dealings, B, strict implementation of law, and C, awareness of guardians. Voting is on, type any WS, select your option, A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. In our public voice segment, we had asked in several provinces, what works have province governments done within their one-year tenure? Let's take a look at what they had to say. अहिलेसम्म प्रदेश सरकारले गरिरहेको कामको प्रत्याभूति गर्न चाहिँ पाइरहेका छैनौ हामी प्रदेश सरकार भइकन झन् देशमा बेरोजगारीहरु धेरै भएका छन् देश र जनतालाई चाहिँ बोझ भएको छ प्रदेश सरकार आफै अनुलमा छ किन भन्दाखेरिमा चाहिँ मुख्यमन्त्रीहरुको भेलाले प्रधानमन्त्रीसँग भेटघाट गरेर अधिकारको कुराहरु गरिरहेको अवस्था छ स्थानीय लेभलले गरेको छ प्रदेश सरकारको त खासै त्यस्तो उपलब्धि देखाउन सक्ने खालको उपलब्धि देखिएको छैन प्रदेश सरकार भन्ने यो बारी हो बारी सेतो हात्ती पाले बाजन ठोक्ने हिन्ने मात्र काम भयो त अरु के भयो त जहाँ जसको पहुँच हुन्छ प्रादेशिक योजनाहरु चाहिँ त्यता त्यता बढी ढल्केर जाने र त्यहाँ नै चाहिँ बढी काम हुने जस्तो पनि देखिएको छ प्रदेश सरकार छ भन्ने चाहिँ सुने हो तर खासै विकास त्यस्तो केही देखिएको छैन राजधानीहरुको रोडहरु अलि राम्रा भएछन् पहिलेको तुलनामा उहाँले गरेका काम प्रति जनताहरु एकदमै निराश देखिएको अवस्था छ Time now for international update. Initial signs suggest a low turnout in controversial poll guaranteed to give a fourth straight term to Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Bangladesh election officials are counting votes after a controversial poll fraught with violence and boycotted by the opposition is guaranteed to give a fourth straight term to Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Bangladeshis largely stayed away from the vote as initial signs suggested a low turnout despite widespread reports of carrot and stick inducements aimed at bolstering the poll's legitimacy. Local media reported that Hasina's Awami League won 216 seats out of 299. Independent candidates took 52 and the Jatiya Party took 11 seats. The results for the rest of the constituencies are still coming in. Official results from the Election Commission are expected on Monday morning. Voting was cancelled at three centres due to irregularities. Hasina last year refused BNP demands to resign and allow a neutral authority to run the election, accusing the opposition of instigating anti-government protests that have rocked the capital since late October and killed at least 14 people. The Israeli attacks have so far claimed lives of 22,835 Palestinians in Gaza, in addition to 58,416 injured ones, according to the Gaza-based health ministry. In a press statement, the ministry said that the Israeli army launched 12 strikes against families in the Gaza Strip, killing 133 Palestinians and wounding 250 others during the past 24 hours. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said on Saturday that Israeli forces will not stop the war in Gaza against Hamas until all the goals are achieved. Israeli army launched intensive air attacks in Khan Yunus and other areas in southern Gaza yesterday, killing at least 82, according to the official Palestinian news agency Wafa. The Israeli army announced Saturday evening that it has dismantled the military framework of Hamas in the northern Gaza Strip, adding that the army is now focusing on dismantling Hamas's operations in the center and south of the enclave. On the same day, Hamas announced that they continued to target Israeli military personnel and vehicles in the Gaza Strip. The Palestinian Islamic Jihad PIJ claimed to have launched rockets at multiple locations in Israel. On Saturday, thousands of protesters took to the street of Tel Aviv, urging the Israeli government to immediately reach an agreement with Hamas on the release of the detained individuals. Protesters also demanded the resignation of Netanyahu, the dissolution of the parliament and early elections. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with Qatar's Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani at Lucille Palace on Sunday during his ongoing Middle East trip to keep the Gaza war from spreading. 
Blinken and the European Union's top diplomat Joseph Borrell were on separate trips to the region to try to quell spillover from the war into Lebanon, the West Bank and Red Sea shipping lanes where Yemen's Iran-aligned Houthi have vowed to keep up attacks until Israel halts its campaign in the Palestinian enclave. Blinken was in Jordan earlier today and will also travel to Israel, the West Bank, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia and Egypt during his fourth trip to the region. Despite global concern over the death and destruction in Gaza and international pressure for the ceasefire, Israeli public opinion remains firmly behind the operation aimed at wiping out the Hamas group that rules Gaza, although there has been a significant drop in support for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky met Japanese Foreign Minister Yoko Kamikawa today on her first trip, in fact, visit to Kyiv. Foreign Minister Yoko Kamikawa pledged Japan's continued support for Ukraine during her unannounced visit. The Japanese Foreign Ministry said in a statement that Japan would strongly demonstrate its commitment to the recovery and reconstruction of Ukraine under a public-private partnership by hosting a Japan-Ukraine conference on February 19. Three officials from the Maldives Youth Ministry mocked the Indian Prime Minister on social media after he visited the nearby archipelago of Lakshadweep and promoted it as a tourist destination. The Maldives government suspended three deputy ministers on Sunday after they mocked Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on social media. Three officials from the youth ministry had called Modi a clown, a terrorist and a puppet of Israel on social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter. The president of Maldives, Mohammed Mizu, has ordered an investigation and suspended the deputy ministers pending the outcome. The three deputy ministers criticized Modi in response to a post in which he shared photos from the pristine beaches of India's tropical Lakshadweep Islands, some 130 kilometers north of the Maldives. Some viewed Modi's post as trying to draw visitors away from the Maldives. The nation of 1,192 low-lying islands relies on tourism for a third of its economy. Indians make up the largest group of international visitors Mizu won an election last year with a pledge to abandon the Maldives' India First policy in a region where New Delhi and Beijing vie for influence. He also pledged to remove a small contingent of Indian troops stationed on the archipelago. However, he has toned down his anti-India rhetoric since coming to power. Sources said that the Maldives government was concerned about potential repercussions from the post about Modi. Japanese soldiers were carrying relief supplies to areas isolated by a magnitude of 7.6 quake on foot, Defense Ministry footage showed. In the video provided by Japan's Defense Ministry, members of the Self-Defense Forces, SDF, were traversing rocky hillsides with backpacks, making their way towards isolated parts of Suzu, Ishikawa Prefecture. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida vowed to provide ceaseless support to areas devastated by the New Year's Day earthquake as snow and sleet hampered rescue and relief efforts. The quake left more than 30,000 homeless and cut power to tens of thousands of residences and businesses. At least 103 people are still reported missing and the death toll rose to 161 this morning. United Airlines passengers were seen trying to rebook their flight tickets as Luis Munoz Marine International Airport after being left stranded for several days in Puerto Rico due to the grounding of the airline's Boeing 737 MAX 9 fleet. A cabin panel blowout on an Alaska Airlines flight on Friday last week had torn off the left side of an eight-week-old 737 MAX 9 plane, forcing it to make an emergency landing in Portland, Oregon. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, ordered the temporary grounding of 171 Boeing jets on Saturday, forcing cancellations from airlines that use the 737 MAX 9. 
Alaska Airlines on Sunday cancelled 170 flights, in fact 170 flights affecting nearly 25,000 customers. It said travel disruptions from the grounding are expected to last through at least midweek. United cancelled 230 flights on Sunday or 8% of scheduled departures. Spain's Coast Guards rescued 132 migrants off the Canary Islands of Fuerteventura, Lanzarato and Gran Canaria today and at least 50 arrived by their own means to Fuerteventura's El Matoral Beach. During one of the rescue operations, Spain's Coast Guard said they also rescued a man traveling in a truck tire and transported him to Fuerteventura's Gran Tajaral port along with 51 other migrants rescued from a boat off the coast of the island. The man traveling in the tire said he had started the journey with a friend who had died on the way, local media reported. A total of 56,852 migrants illegally entered Spain by land or sea in 2023, an 82% year-on-year increase and the highest number since 2018 when 64,298 arrivals were registered, Interior Ministry data showed. Before wrapping up, here's a look at the top stories once again. Nominations for the upcoming National Assembly election to be registered today. Majority of the parties finalize their candidates. The government fails to intensify monitoring at border points amid rise in cases of new subvariant of coronavirus in more than 40 countries, including India. A low turnout in controversial poll guaranteed to give a fourth straight term to Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Official result expected tomorrow morning. And Liverpool beat Arsenal to reach the fourth round of FA Cup. Paris Saint-Germain thrash Revel 9-0 in the French Cup. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good day.